Hey everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Over the past several years that I've been working with the uh, diode lasers, one of the biggest questions that I always get is, how does that laser compare to the Otura laser? Well, up until now, I have not been able to answer that question because I didn't have one. Well, I decided to get an Otura Laser Master 3, and this laser is amazing. It is a revolutionary new design compared to the previous generation. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a third generation laser and it compares very, very nicely to the other lasers. I want to do a little something different today. In all the research that I've done, I never see anyone actually assemble the laser. What I typically see is a great big box. They take the parts out and then the next scene, it's all put together and running. I want to be able to show you step by step how to assemble the machine and some tips along the way that's going to make that journey a whole lot easier. I've had so many questions over the last several years about the Otura laser, and I've always been able to say I don't know because I don't have one. Well, I finally decided to get one so that I could answer your questions and be able to make the comparison between the Otura and the other different manufacturers, whether it's Fox Alien, the X-Tools, or whatever it happens to be. So here we go. This is the Otura Laser Master 3. When you open up this box, there's no surprise. It is very well packaged, as are all of the different lasers that you receive. Now, the one change that you're going to get, when you look at this manual, there's really not much there. Yes, it's written in a dozen different languages, but it's only a couple pages long. The only thing that's really of value there is the QR code so that you can actually download the manual. The other thing that you're going to notice is that the Laser Master 3 is a totally different design. If you'd actually take a look at it, there has been a huge change in the evolution of the lasers over the past few years. And more and more, as the Otura laser and the X-Tool, they have revolutionized the design concepts and more and more of the manufacturers are going in this type of design. The nice thing about this, guys, this laser can be assembled very, very easily and quickly. The other thing I want to point out, you do have a few little samples here that you can make some test engravings with, as well as the brush to help keep it clean. And you also have the switch now to be able to use the rotary roller because that is increasingly becoming more and more popular. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. The important thing is everything that you need is contained in this simple, uh, easy to assemble kit. Even the gantry itself is completely pre-assembled. You don't have to deal with putting on the belt, the stepper motors, and the wheels, nothing. Everything is completely pre-assembled. It's literally just going to slide on to the rails on the Y-axis. I mentioned the manual a few moments ago, but I want to show you this first thing. It is written in a multitude of different languages. The other thing is you're going to notice is that there's only a couple of three pages for each of it, and it gives you all the information that you need. The most important thing is the QR codes. Here's a quick look of everything that comes with the Otura laser. And you have the manual, you have all the little parts, the belts, you even have the air assist that's all ready to hook up. Of course, you have the power uh, cord and the AC, uh, DC adapters, and the machine itself. There's basically four parts there, and it's assembled. Very, very easy. Don't forget the glasses, that's included also. So, as I said, this is a very complete kit. When you open up the manual on the computer, you're going to see everything in great detail. The other nice thing about this, this is a summary page here, and then you have videos, documentation, software, all of that. When you click on the documentation, for example, all you need to do is just click on the appropriate flag for the language that you need, and you're going to get a full detail on all the information. In addition to that, you can actually go to the Laser Kerbal and the Lightburn to their uh, download pages and be able to acquire the software. In addition, look at the bottom. You have some more QR codes 
to be able to get even more information. So this is a pretty amazing manual, even though, quite frankly, guys, I'm more of the old school. I like the paper, but when you get into this and see all of the information that they provide on the computer, it's really pretty amazing. To put the rails on, you're just going to need four screws. It's one for each of the different uh, corners. And you can see right there, guys, this only goes together one way. Now, on this side, there is a cable that you're going to need just to slip right through this rail on the y-axis, but it just slides straight through. And this one screw will hold it in place. On the other end, that wire will just slip out, and there is literally just that easy. Now, when this screws together, it makes it where it's square. You really don't have to worry about any additional alignment. That is one of the nice things about these uh, newer lasers. They are designed to be able to go together where they're perfectly square. This design is very unique in a sense. One screw and it's done. One note, if it doesn't go in very easily, then it's not aligned properly. You need to make an adjustment. Now that you have both of the y-axis rails on, it's time to put the gantry on. And you can see all of this is pre-assembled. Both sets of wheels um, are attached. This gantry is completely pre-assembled. The only thing that you need to do is just line up the y-axis and slide it into its position. It's now time to add this little pulley and add the belts. Now this just slides into this slot and this is used to be able to tension the belts. I'm going to temporarily just snug it up so it doesn't move and it'll be time to attach the belts. Of course, once the belts are attached and this is completely assembled, I'll come back to this and tension the belt to get the proper uh, tension on them. Now this is the little set screw. I'm going to put that in now. That is designed to be able to hold this pulley in place once you have the belts tension. And they're just a little uh, slot right there that you'll screw that into. Now this is a very simple yet very effective design to be able to attach the belt and be able to easily make the adjustments. To be able to put the belts on, I'm going to remove this cover. Now I remove the bottom screw and I'm removing this front screw and there's a third screw that will be on top. To be able to get to that screw, I'm just going to flip the machine over and get to it. Now this step, as I said, is not 100% necessary. The reason that I do it though, I want to be able to show you the access to that sprocket. You could just simply slip the belt in and feed it and kind of hook it on. But this is much easier to be able to do. You can see where I just slide that belt right through that hole and attach it to the sprocket. Have an access cover like this makes it very simple to be able to attach the belt. At the other end, it's even easier. You just have that sprocket loosened, you just hook the belt over it, and then you can tighten it up. It's really, guys, it's that simple. The design of this is really amazing. So I have a rough tension now on the belt, and I'm just going to tighten it in position. Now keep in mind, this is not the final tension of the belt, but it is tight enough so it's not going to fall off and I can finish the assembly. The last part is to attach this gantry. And no more feeding belts around the wheels and over sprockets. All this needs to do is just slide right into this slot. Now this slot has teeth that match the belt itself and you just align it up and it slides in. Much, much easier than the previous designs. At this point, the belts are on. It's time to put that cover back on and attach the three screws. Again, you do not have to take that cover off. I just find it to be a lot easier to be able to do so. With this process completed now, I'm going to just do the exact same thing on the other side. One of the things that I find very interesting is I very rarely see a detailed assembly process of these different machines. Really don't understand why because I think it has really helped out a lot of people. And according to the comments, you guys have confirmed my information. Now, if you disagree with that or you'd like to comment, by all means, please leave me a comment down below if you'd like to be able to have the detailed uh, explanation and the assembly process 
of these different machines. Both belts are now installed and it's time to square the gantry to the machine. When you slide it all the way to the back, you're going to find two screws that the gantry should bump up against. Then you can make very small adjustments by adjusting that belt on the gantry to make sure that it's square. It's time to assemble the front part of the machine. I have found that it's much easier to plug in these cables right now. They're a little bit hard to get to if the machine is actually assembled. So it's simply plugging that one in. And remember that little wire that we slid through the Y axis? Well, it's time to plug that one in also. It's easier just to rotate this part and then you have easy access to be able to plug it in is you have more room to be able to work than if the machine was actually assembled. And with my big fingers, I still need to have a little bit of assistance with this Allen wrench to be able to make sure that that is completely plugged in. My finger just won't get down there with this small cable. Now this was the most difficult side, but now that the cables are taken care of, all you need to do is just slide the Y uh, axis onto the X axis on the front of the machine. Make sure that it's aligned and put that one screw in. The other side was very easy. Now this is the laser module itself. It just has a little dovetail um, bracket to be able to hold it and it is a very lightweight, very compact laser. Before I put this onto the machine, there is a little bit of pre-assembly that needs to take place. There's an air assist nozzle. I want to screw it into position right there at the bottom of the laser. I do plan on using the air assist with this machine. Now I want to point out too, this has that little kickstand to be able to get the Z height correct over your material. Now we've seen that before. That's a very similar design to what you see on the X-Tools uh, D1. Next, let's add the cover. Now it has two little tabs. This is a long tab on this side, and then there's a short tab on the other side. And of course, that's gonna to correspond to the laser itself. And this just literally snaps into position. Just make sure you have the tabs in the proper location. It's very easy to be able to take this shield on and off. There will be situations where you will need to remove this. Having the little tabs like this makes it very easy. Now, we'll just slide this right down the dovetail and be able to screw it into its final destination. There's two connectors on the top. The first one is for the laser power itself, and there's only one way that it plugs in. There's a little slot there. You line up the little pins, or you line up that slot, and you plug it in. The other one is for the air hose. Now, this has a little quick disconnect in there, so when you shove the uh, hose down inside, you should be able to have it lock right into those teeth. If not, just push down just a little bit on the outside edge of that quick disconnect and you'll be able to shove it in a little bit further so that those teeth will clamp onto the um, hose itself. When you adjust the height of the laser, you need to, a way to be able to tighten it and hold it in position. And here's a little set screw that you'll be able to use that. That knob is a good size to be able to use your fingers to be able to loosen and tighten it right into place. And the other nice thing about it is, it is long enough to make it where it's easy to reach. Now it's time for some cable management. There are several holes on the back of the gantry that you can put the zip ties in to be able to secure the cables. Make sure you have enough room so that the gantry uh, can move in all the directions and that the uh, laser head itself has freedom of movement. You don't want to have anything to bind here. But I just simply take the air hose and the power cable both to be able to run into this and just use a zip tie to tie it in position. You don't need to have it real tight. If you get it too tight, guess what? You're going to pinch that air hose and you're not going to get the air that's needed to get to that laser head. One more tip that I want to give you, don't forget, there's a belt right underneath there. So if you're not careful when you stick that zip tie in, you might catch the belt underneath there. Please don't do that. That will cause a lot of problems. So check and double check to make sure that the zip tie only is going through the hole, not capturing the belt underneath, and then securing the cable and the air hose. You can also see that I'm moving the laser head left and right along the uh, axis just to make sure that there is freedom of movement and that there's no binding. On this section right here, you need to group these cables together 
and be able to uh, zip tie those also. Now the laser itself will plug into the correct cable and it's marked L, L being for laser. Now if you haven't done so already, on this main cable you have the connector there to plug into the uh, x-axis. And I've already done this in this shot. What I want to do here is just secure that major uh, cable to the uh, pre-installed bracket that will hold that into its position. And then I'll also add another zip tie just to be able to keep those little connectors all grouped together. And that keeps everything nice and neat and well organized and most important out of the way so it doesn't catch on anything. Once you're happy with everything it's time just to come back and cut off all of these long legs from the zip ties. You don't need those hanging around either. It needs to be nice, neat, and well organized in all manners. And having those long tails out there, and they're just not necessary. One of the biggest questions that people all the time ask is how do I get the correct tension on the belt? Well, the easiest, simplest way to be able to do that is raise up this machine and let the gantry slide down. It needs to be at about a 45 to 55 degree angle and it should slide slowly down toward the rear. If it doesn't slide at all, the belts are too tight. If it wants to fall, well don't let it hit, but it's going to be too loose. You want it to go at about that pace. Few final steps. You have two little screws that are left over. And those are actually stop screws that slide in on the Y entry on both the left and the right side. Those screws are designed to be able to hit and stop the gantry from moving forward and prevent you from damaging the laser. So make sure that you don't forget those screws. As you can see as the gantry come down it will hit those screws and stop and that will make sure that the laser itself is protected and not damaged so that it does not hit that front part of the machine. Please check this. More than likely this uh, e-stop switch is going to be depressed. So please twist the knob in the direction of the arrow and make sure that it pops up. The last step, you have a little computer uh, SD card. That card must be in. You also have two other buttons there for the boot and for the reset. But this machine will not function properly without that SD card installed. I want to talk about this switch because this is switched over right now for the Y motor. If you switch it over here, this is going to be for your rotary roller. That is a nice switch to be able to have because it makes your setup of your rotary roller a whole lot easier. You also are provided this cable with your Laser Master 3. What's nice about that, this is easy to be able to get to. You just simply plug this in, and then you'll take the other end, of course, and plug it into your rotor roller. Make sure that that switch is over in that direction, and you'll be ready to go. I like this position and this setup a lot better, actually, than what's on the X tool, because on the X tool, you had to plug this in underneath and that just really was a little bit difficult to be able to get to so much much easier and then when you're not using the rotary roller just simply unplug this cable and you can store this away and be ready for the next time I want to thank everybody for watching this video today I really appreciate you stopping by and spending some time at my shop I also want to especially thank the Patreons that help support this channel because Every dollar that I get from the Patreons goes right back into this channel to help to be able to produce more and more videos. One of the things that you're going to be noticing is I'm going to be doing less and less review type uh, videos in the future and more and more of the project videos. So I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy both equally but enjoy the project videos a little bit more. So if you like this video, by all means, yes, give me a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye now.